Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install soffit and fascia like a pro. So my goal is by the end of this video, you can do your own project with these. If you're new to this channel, my name is Josh. This channel is all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, smash that like button, and ring the bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video. So if you see the house here behind me, we're going to install the soft and fascia across here and install the fascia across the top of that gable. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do before we install the soffit is install what's called F-channel. F-channel is what holds the soffit to the house. It's just more or less a track it just slides into. So in order to get the height of this um, F-channel, you simply just take your framing square slide it against the house until it butts against your fascia board boom so that tells me i'm on the same level as this fascia board so you just mark the top of your square and that's going to be the top of our um, soffit where it hits the house so in order for this f channel to work out right you need to understand that the top of the soffit is going to be the top of this track not the bottom so when it goes across, it's gonna be same level from here to here, not from the bottom, but from here. So go ahead and make a mark, and then we're gonna hook our chalk line to it and go down about 12 foot and snap a line, so that way it gives us a level mark to go across of to install our F channel. So I wanted to show you this up close. Here is my chalk line going across. That is the same plane as this sub fascia board. And right here is the F channel I have installed over my uh, porch here so if you can see this f channel now it's flipped kind of upside down because this is a finished exposed edge now as you run this where there's going to be siding you're going to want to flip it like this if that makes sense you'll understand better i'll show you a close-up of what this looks like on the other side of the porch here so you better understand it but when you install this f channel you simply line the top of this to the chalk line so it's going to look something like that so you better understand the transition. If you look closely there, you'll see from the porch beam, it transitions to the regular part of the house and the F channel is flipped on different sides where it's nailed. So now that we got our F channel installed, we gotta get the length for our soffit. And in order to do that, all you gotta do is slide your tape measure into the F channel, go tight against the back of it, measure to the very end of the sub fascia. And in this case, we got 12 inches. So after you get your measurement from the edge to the inside of the F channel, subtract a quarter inch. So we had 12 inches as our actual measurement. We need to cut the pieces 11 and three quarter. Let's go cut some. So after you know the length of the soffit you need, you're gonna have to cut it into sections like this. In order to do that, there's three very common ways. I'm gonna show you each way. One's going from the most basic, using the most basic tools, to more complex ways using more complex tools, but it will cut it much faster. So it goes from DIYing for a small project up to a big project for a professional. So let's get started. So I'm gonna show you the most common way first. It involves a framing square and a pair of tin snips. And all you gotta do is just cut it like a regular board. So first thing you would do, just go ahead and make a measurement, say 11 and three quarter in this case. And you would go ahead and just take your framing square, just like you were gonna cut a board, lay it against a straight edge, and then slide it up to your mark. And that way it's gonna give you a nice square line. And then you simply just take your 10 snips and cut along that line, like so. And this stuff cuts relatively easy, and the colder it is, the more brittle it is, so you need to be very careful not to crack it. So just trace that, or cut along that line, and then boom, you got 11 and 3 quarter inch piece. This is not the method I use on my jobs. I typically use another method that's much faster, so let me show you that one. The second method that I like to use involves a soffit jig, and if you need to know how to make one of these, I'll put a link up here to a video I made on how to make this exact jig. So this involves a circular saw, in this case a battery circular saw with the blade turned backwards so that way it doesn't damage the soffit as it cuts because it's too aggressive if you have it turned around the regular way. And it involves wearing ear protection because it's super loud. So if you need to use a circular saw, I recommend using a jig like this. And this um, soffit comes in 12 foot sheets so you can get 24 pieces by the time you double up the soffit because there's two sheets laying here. So each cut 
gets you two foot of soffit. So it's very fast and portable. So this is one I like to use. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. All you gotta do is go ahead and you can either measure onto the soffit of the length you need. So you can just measure over, let's say 11 and three quarter and make a mark. Or you can have a reference line on your soffit jig like I do for every couple inches. So that way you can just use it as a reference, but um, either way works well. So that looks pretty good right there. And then what's very nice is there's no, um, there's no skill into cutting this. You simply just lay it into the track and just run your blade right down it. And then voila, you have two pieces of soffit and you can just simply, if you have a mark on your jig, line it up to that mark and run it down it. All right, let's move on to the third way, which is probably the most common way other than using a soffit jig to cut it fast. Let's do it. So the third and final way that I've found you can cut soffit fast is using a miter box like this that slides so you can get these long cuts. So cutting 12 inch soffit is easy with something like this. So the only reason why I don't like to use this method is because it's hard to kind of hold the soffit, mark it and cut it. That's why I found the jig to be much faster. But if you use this method, be sure to take your blade off and turn it around backwards, preferably Use a trim blade so it's already finer tooth. Then once you turn around backwards, you'll definitely cut it without breaking the soffit if it isn't too cold. So yeah, I mean, this uh, method's fine. And like I said, you just need an expensive tool like this to do it. So it's probably the least common for me to use. I mean, if I'm in a pinch and I don't have my soffit uh, jig, then I'll probably resort to this over the standard using the framing square method. So just something to keep in mind, but that is the three most common ways to cut soffit. So I went ahead and pre-cut about 24 pieces of soffit. And the reason why I could is because I took a measurement every 10 foot down the overhang and my measurements were consistent. So I can pre-cut a bunch of them. So I'd recommend you go through, take measurements to make sure you can do the same because fascia, the subfascia has been known to vary within a quarter inch sometimes. So double check that before you pre-cut a bunch just to save you a bunch of wasted soffit. All right, let's go ahead and install this pile of soffit. All right, we're gonna go ahead and install this piece of soffit. It's very easy to do. You have a nailing flange on this side and then an interlocking channel on this side. So you just take this side, lock it into the existing soffit, slide it into the F channel, make sure it's nice and snug and make sure it all looks good as far as the expansion gap. That all looks really good. Go ahead and take a aluminum roofing nail. I use an inch and a quarter galvanized. Go ahead and nail it into the nailing flange on the subfascia. And this is something you do nail relatively tight. Make sure we look nice and square, it looks good. And uh, the reason why you nail this stuff tighter than you do siding is because siding, you need to leave enough room for it to kind of be movable. Now this is gonna be solid. So by the time you put your uh, fascia up here, it's not going anywhere anyways, but so wind don't blow it out for sure, always nail it snug. And now the next piece is gonna require a soffit vent because I got a bathroom on the other side of this wall. So in order to vent the bathroom, I need to come out the soffit. So I'm gonna show you how to install that next. All right, so this contraption is called a soffit vent. And the idea here is this is under the soffit and this goes above the soffit and this just sandwiches between the soffit. So what you gotta do, take a piece of soffit and cut the center out like this. And you just slide the piece together. And what you need to do before you slide this together, before you install it, you need to put a block up above to nail this to before you install your soffit. But I'm gonna go ahead and snap this together so you'll see what it looks like on the ground. So you just slide it in here into your pre-cut piece. It's very, uh, you wanna cut this relatively tight you want to make sure bugs can't slide in between the cracks here. So that's pretty important. So go ahead and slide that in tight. As you can see, a nice solid fit looks good. And then if you're putting this piece on in this particular model, you want this solid edge on the pointing out so you don't see it inside the venting. So we know we're going to snap in like this. So we need to put our solid piece 
pointing out like that. So you just simply, after you have this installed like that above, you just snap this together like so. Just gonna snap together and uh, it's uh, pretty easy after it's nailed because you'll have a solid piece to push against. So by the time it's said and done, you're gonna have something that looks like that hanging. So it's pretty, pretty sweet contraption. Sometimes like I said, at these bathrooms, you can't vent out the side of the house because there's no way to vent because of the way the walls land. So just FYI, let's go ahead and continue that soffit. From below, that's what your soffit vent's going to look like. It gives it a nice sleek appearance. Each piece of soffit covers a foot. So after you get going with this and get your own little system down, it moves pretty quick. And if you look at the trees in the background, there was a good bit of wind going on while I was making this video. So you will hear some wind noise here and there. So just as a little heads up, and after I get this soffit up to the end of that F channel, it's time to install the next piece of F channel. And I usually just start in the middle and go ahead and nail it at every stud. I try to hit every stud while I nail this. Sometimes I miss and I have to put a nail in beside a nail. But all in all, I do hit the studs. It does make a much more solid um, piece of F channel when you do that. And here I am just continuing that run on the new piece of F channel. And you want to make sure as you go across, like I said before, just put those nails in snug. If you want this process to be a little more efficient, you can install the soffit and fascia as you install the siding if you're using a scaffolding. And the reason why I say that, you see how many times i got to move the ladder. And not only that, it's so much easier to work off a scaffolding instead of a ladder. I want to show you what you do when you get to the end here. So when you get to the end of this uh, bird box right here, you just got to nail the ends with aluminum fascia nails because there's no way to have a nailing flange here because when you end the run, you're going to cut that off to end it. So you're going to have something that looks about like that. So the product I'm going to be installing for the fascia is six inch ribbed aluminum fascia. And you got to fasten this using aluminum nails. So I got small white trim nails that are aluminum that's going to blend in with this fascia. And how you install this fascia on this overhang is different compared to how you install it on a gable end because this gets guttering put on it. So you can face nail this, but you can't face nail the gable end. And I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. So the first thing you gotta do is slide this up under your um, drip edge that's on the roof. So you gotta overlap the other piece about an inch or so and then it slides up under the drip edge. And sometimes you gotta work it back and forth to get it under the drip edge. And it, this is much easier to do with two people, but I'm one of those that works alone a lot, so I choose to uh, save a couple dollars. All right, so after you have this thing pushed up under the drip edge, you wanna make sure your overlap is no more than an inch and no less than an inch. All right, so after you get your overlap correct, and it's a little uneven there, so push it up all the way. And now just put a trim nail here in the center and push it up tight against the soffit. We're just gonna face nail right in the center. So I always put two nails every about three foot or so. There's no exact science to the nailing, but I wouldn't put it any farther apart than every three foot. So now, just nail it every three foot, then at the joint, we put two in the joint as well. So that way it kind of ties all that fascia in together. So just do that till we get to the end where the bird box is, and that's where I'm going to show you a certain way you got to cut to go around that bird box. Stay tuned. Again, I can't stress this enough. You only face nail the fascia where you're going to be having guttering screwed to the fascia. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so once you get to the end of your fascia, do not nail it yet, because as you know already, that gets overlapped. So you keep that nail free till your next piece overlaps like we did over there, then we nail it. All right, so in order to finish this run, I need a 92 and three quarter inch piece to come from the end here and to overlap an inch on the other piece. But I'm gonna add another inch and I'm gonna overlap this bird box. And I'm gonna show you why after I wrap this whole thing. But I'm gonna show you how to cut this end piece. So we'll cut that, then I'll show you how to wrap the bird box. 
So let's get into the garage and get it cut. So here's our piece of fascia. So we know we need a 92 and three quarter inch piece exposed on the overhang. So we measure 92 and three quarter and we make a mark on the piece that overlaps the soffit because we're just going to make a cut there. So we go ahead and mark a straight line there. I use a speed square. It seems to be the quickest, hence the name speed square. And then we just go over about an inch. Doesn't that be perfect? So roughly an inch. And then we're gonna make a square line going across the face. All right, so we're gonna cut this, come over and cut that. And then I'll show you how to bend this to wrap around that bird box. So what I like to do before I cut this is just flip it over and then score the crease between this line and this line because this is going to allow you to break it easier instead of trying to cut it with your snips. So that's scored very, very deeply. And then go ahead and cut this side. All right. And then sneak on the other side here and cut that side. All right, now, since we have that side scored that we did, it should snap pretty easy. So there we go. So lay this scrap to the side. And this is our piece we're gonna need. So flip it over. Now we need a straight line from this edge from here scored. So we just go ahead and put our speed square there, score it. Not real deep, just kind of lightly. And now you just take a block that square, lay it up to where you scored. So somewhere around there. And I'm gonna go ahead and just rescore it to make sure we're on the right line. Okay, again, not real deep. This is just so you can bend it easier. And now we just gotta bend this end up. There we go. And this acts as a nice guide to keep it square. And then I'll go ahead and fold it in a little more than it needs to be and then fold it out just a little bit. So that way it gives us a nice sharp appearance. Okay, so something like that. So from this side, you have a nice square piece that's gonna wrap that bird box. It's gonna look really sharp when it's done. All right, so that's the piece finishing up the run. And as you can see here, the reason why I bent this metal is because when you put this L piece on to wrap this bird box, this is going to be an exposed edge if you cut it flush, but if you wrap it, any water that hits that corner will run down this aluminum instead of touching this wood behind. So now we got to wrap this, like I said. So all we got to do is get a measurement from here to here, and then from here to back here. And then we know exactly what we got to bend, and then you measure the distance from here to here to know how wide this has to be to wrap it. So we're going to use the remaining piece of that metal to make this bird box wrap. And the first thing we got to do is measure over for our face. So let's go over 11 and 7 eighths. And then we're going to take our speed square, mark a square line. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and snip that. Okay. All right, and now what we're going to do is cut a little triangle out of it. And I'll show you this up close here in just a second. And that's way, with that triangle out of there, it'll bend easier if you're wondering why you got to do that. So that's what it looks like. A nice triangle. Here's a straight cut, then a little angle. And then we make our next measurement, which is 11 and 3 quarter heavy. And when I say heavy, I just mean a sixteenth more than 11 and 3 quarter. That is construction talk. All right, and now 
Just go ahead and square that. All right. And now this one, we're gonna cut off all the way. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that straight line. Okay, and now we're gonna put a straight line using our speed square here. And we're gonna snip that all the way off. <laughs> and a good pair of 10 snips are hard to beat for this. I wouldn't recommend buying just any 10 snips. I'd buy a good pair. All right. And now we're gonna come back to where our straight line is here and use our straight edge board. We're just gonna line up with our cut mark. Let's see. Uh, try to get this to where sits the best it looks pretty good all right like i said always score it a little bit before i bend it just gives it a nice line to follow all right so now just go ahead hold the board tight and bend that metal over okay so now we'll get the board out of the way and finish bending that all the way over and I always like to take my hands and just go ahead and bend it more than it needs to be. Okay. And then pull it back just a little bit. So that way it gives us a nice square edge. And as you can see, it's a nice sharp crease in there, which that's what we want. And now let's go install this piece of metal. All right. So in order to install this, all you gotta do is place it over the bird box like so, push it up snug on each end, and make sure it all looks good. Make sure you're not overhanging too much over here, and the corner looks good, everything looks good. So now, just hold it up into place, and the only place you can nail this for the moment is right up here. So we're gonna tack a nail in here to hold it. All right, and now, don't nail this side yet and we can put another tack up in this corner okay put these nails up high because the soffit's going to cover those nails up and you don't put any nails in the face here and then like i said don't nail this yet because your piece of fascia that comes over this gable is going to overlap this you don't want nails in the way so we're going to cut this piece of metal next I'm going to show you how to cut it and how it nails into this piece. So what we got to do is get a measurement of our overhang here. So it looks like we need at least, uh, we can do 14 inches. So we're going to come 14 inches past this with the metal, cut it off straight, and then we can fine tune it after it's overhanging. So um, this doesn't have to be the perfect length because like I said, we can cut it off after we install it But just make sure it's long enough to go across this on a diagonal. So let's go cut that All right, so grab your piece of fascia lay it face down Make sure you're using the right side depending on what side of the gable you're on. Let's come back here measure 14 inches So right here's 14 inches And this is just a rough measurement at this point because we're gonna fine cut it after it's up. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So go ahead and square that up. Okay. And now before you cut and break that, what we're gonna do is score this several times. You wanna make sure you have a nice deep score here because it'll make it easier when you go to bending and cutting or breaking this edge off, I should say. All right, so three or four good scores should be fine. And now take your 10 snips, cut down the line. And now you don't cut the face, obviously, because we need this part to overhang. So now the best thing to do is bend this over. Okay. And then pull back on it. And it'll snap that piece off. And now this is going to give us something to overhang that bird box. 
So let's go get it installed. All right, so in order to install this, you must first slot it up into your drip edge, just like you did the other fascia. All right, so now as we slide it all the way down, make sure we're tight against that bird box. That looks pretty good. And now we go ahead and push it up tight. We're going to take a trim nail. And instead of nailing the face of it this time, we're going to nail it up under into the groove of the soffit. So we'll go ahead and get a nail started here. And I'll show you up close after I have this installed what it looks like. And be real easy, you don't over nail it. Because it's easy to over nail that. All right. And then every three feet or so, put a nail up under it into it. Make sure you're tight against the subfacial when you do this, because if it's bowed out and you nail it, it's going to be difficult to get it back all the way, if you can. All right. It's a little breezy today, too, which that makes it a little more difficult as well. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to cut this end off. It's very easy, but I'm going to show you. So you must not forget that this part right here wasn't nailed yet. So you got to make sure it's tight and then hold your piece you just put on that's overlapping it and just pop a nail right in the middle right here towards the lower end of this. So that's the only spot you should have to face nail on this whole gable for the fascia. So as you can see, this doesn't look right, right? So now that this is sitting where it needs to be, all you gotta do, take your pencil and scrub from behind where it needs cut off on the front and back. Okay. And now all you gotta do is take your ladder on the other side, cut those lines, and then it'll cut right off. That's why you don't nail this end yet, because you can flex it out to cut it easier. And depending on what handing you are, it could be easier one hand versus the other. All right. And that looks pretty good. So now as you can see, you just gotta go back on the other side and put a couple nails to hold that into place. All right, I usually come back about a half inch and nail along this edge. That way it just seals that end up really nicely. So that's how you wrap your bird box in metal. I hope you found that easy. So now I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm going to show you underneath where I nailed it so you understand what I meant by nailing into the soffit groove. Okay, so if you look here, there's this groove where the soffit is. Now, if you see the nail is into the fascia and into that groove. You don't want to nail it here because it'll push this soffit up when you put a nail in it. So you want to make sure you're in that groove. And that's what it looks like here. Another thing I wanted to show you, you can nail right here too because your J-channel or actually your vinyl corner is going to come up and cover this up. So if you stay within about a half inch, three quarters inch, you should be able to cover that up with uh, corners. And uh, if you look over here, that's what that looks like. And it's up to you if you want to put nails in this uh, drip edge. I do sometimes if it's sticking out a lot. But, um, you know, some people recommend not doing it in case they got to replace your roof and pull that drip edge off and it's nailed to your fascia. So. That's kind of your choice, but that's what that looks like up close. And let me show you what the bottom ended up looking like. You'll probably be happy with it. I was happy with it. Um, that's what it looks like. That was a long run. That was about a 70 foot run of soffit and fascia. So turned out all right. I cannot complain about that. All right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about this project that I just did as far as the fascia soffit, anything of that nature, go ahead and ask them in the comments below and I'll get to you as soon as possible. And again, I wanna say thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to subscribe, smash that like button, ring the bell so you get notifications every time I release a new video. And thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.